Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to all the viewers watching today and welcome to the brand new show on Imam Hussein TV, Her Thoughts, um, where we discuss a range of topics um, and delve into the many lessons that we can learn and implement into our own life. Now, today we are discussing our lady, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, um, daughter of Fatima and Ali and granddaughter of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Um, Zainab alayhi salam was born um, in a household with five infallib infallibles, a household which um, the angel Jibra'il regularly descended upon and born in the purest of heritage. Now today we want to discuss who she is, um, we want to discuss what she went through, we want to discuss what lessons we can learn from this pure and great lady. Um, Sayyidina Zainab alayhi salam went through so much in the battle of Karbala and even after the battle of Karbala yet she expressed nothing but patience. So we all recognize her great status, we all recognize what she went through but the question is, do we truly connect with Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam and do we truly learn the lessons that, um, that we learn from her and implement it into our own life? Now, inshallah, today we'll be discussing that. Here with me in the studio is um, our, my co-presenters, um, Sister Zahra, Sister Sayyidah and Sister Zahir. as alaikum. Wa alaykum so let's begin. Um, so first of all, let's start with who is um, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam and what, what exactly did she go through? And is there a specific point in her life which really resonates with you or, or really, you know, hits deep within yourself? I think, you know, the way you started and you said that she was born into a household with infallibles. Um, and we have that hadith, um, I think it's Imam Zain al Abidin who says that she was a lady who had knowledge without being taught. Mm -hmm. And that is such a striking hadith because it, it, you kind of try and sense the, the, you try and imagine how much, what was the depth of her knowledge? Mm -hmm. What was the depth of her purity? She was never taught, yet she had that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So she, she was born in the household of Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Hazrat Abbas, you know, and, and she had all these characteristics around her, Imam Ali, Bibi Fatima, Prophet Muhammad. She grew up in that pure household. So imagine what kind of characteristics she possessed to help her through the mission of Imam Hussein, to help her through, you know, the day of Ashura and mm. beyond that, how she propagated Islam, how she carried the message of Imam Hussein to how we have it today. Yeah. You know, she yeah. was a lady who started the first majalises. Nothing. If it wasn't for her, we would, us four, we would not be sitting here today. Um, I think personally <coughs> for myself, um, her character is something that overwhelms me. There mm. are so many lessons to learn from her. When you look at her life from the moment she's born to how it went through her, the, you know, we talk about Karbala that came towards the end of her life. Mm. Um, they say, what, she, she passed away six months after Karbala, um, some narrations say. But when you look at how she was brought up um, in the comfort of a home with parents, and then, you know, the difficult, like going through with her father, him being the fourth Khalifa, or, you know, as our Imam, you know, the turmoil politically they went through, but the protection she had with mm. her brothers around <coughs> her, um, her resilience, her strength, her empowerment as a female, um, and at no point does she show any less, you know, courageousness than, than her mother, mm -hmm. um, say the mm -hmm. Fatima, salam alayhi, or her grandmother, say the um, Khadija. You think of her lineage from both sides, and you think this lady who gave so much of herself, and yet her humility, mm -hmm. that in Karbala, I just think, you know, how she served everybody selflessly and didn't take any claim for herself but it was as though yes they say that when they when she was there that it was like you know imam ali was there you know, her her presence mm. but i think what she teaches us is how to be a wholesome woman mm. in many aspects of her mm. life and you can't just dissect because we're looking at karbala we're in maharam at the moment but her life up to now is yes. something that we have so much to learn as women mm. that these are complete women they teach us from the moment, you know, what it's like to be a daughter, what it's like to be a wife, what it's like to be a mother, what it's like to serve your imam. Mm. And these are lessons <coughs> that I think till the end of my life, mm -hmm. she will continue to be teaching mm. me. So, That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like when we look at any of the personalities that we talk about during this time of year, we, like we said last time, we always look at the highlight of their life. Mm. And 
when we think about Sayyid Zainab, the highlight of her life was Karbala, post Karbala, her sermon. And it's not just like she flicked a switch and suddenly she became a superwoman and all these things just happened. Mm. There was clearly a background to it. And if we look back to her life, she was six years old when she saw her mother give the sermon, um, the Fadakiya sermon. She, her, Fatima Zahra at that time was injured when she gave that sermon. And for a six-year-old to see her injured mother saying, actually, no, I'm going to stand up for my rights. I'm going to go. And at that time, you could say that was political activism mm -hmm. as well. And for her to see that from such a young age, it's no wonder that she ended up the way yeah. she ended up. Even, you know, Zahra, you spoke about her selflessness and she always put others first. Again, it was, you know, the famous words of Fatima Zahra, Ajar, Thumadar. Always, we pray for others before we yeah. pray mm. for ourselves. Mm. So, it doesn't take a lot of um, digging to see where she got all these qualities from. Um, and I think one of the things that often we, this is an injustice that we do to all the Ahlul Bayt, unfortunately, is we only look at the big things and we don't really look at what was it they did every day that led up to this mm. huge highlight in their life. Mm. <clears throat> Definitely. I mean, touching upon everything that you got, uh, that you have said, um, going back before the Battle of Karbala, mm. Sayyid Zayim used to used to hold regular majalis yeah. mm. in Medina and Kufa, and that was very much known. Even when Hind saw um, Sayyid Zayim after the Battle of Karbala, of, of course she didn't recognize her, but when she asked her, tell me, I remember I was a maid at mm. the house of Ali and Fatima, and you know, tell me yeah. about Hussein, tell me about... Zainab, she said, I am Zainab, you know, Hin starts crying. But so we see that the education and, mm -hmm. and knowledge, as you mentioned, was a big key in, yeah. in, in Sayyidah Zainab. But do you feel like our communities today emphasize on women becoming educators when it comes to the religious platforms? Do you think we lack female educators in the religious pl platform? Is, is that, you know, should we encourage more women, you know, in regards to that? Mm. I think we definitely have um, work as women. I think we've often, a lot of us are children of immigrants. You know, we've come to these countries. We're, we're learning cultures, identities, and we are, a lot of us are, so our parents have identities, very strong identities from where they're back home. We in this, that are born and bred in these countries, we are forming identities and we are looking to people like say the Zainab because mm -hmm. you can go have a culture back home, but what will you affiliate when you have a culture in the West as mm -hmm. well? Mm -hmm. And so your identity is looking at these women and you're seeing something that women today are just about getting the rights for, where mm -hmm. they've had those rights 1400 years ago. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to then go towards other systems? Mm -hmm. No, we're going to go towards these amazing ladies and think, how can we emulate their life into my life? So I think when you said talk about, we're now progressing into this whole education, like Masha, you, go, you do a lot, you've got a young family, mm -hmm. and still you're doing your part. And you, know, you mentioned in another show that you speak to, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you teach as well, and I'm sure Zahir is the same, that these are things that we can start you know, as a new generation come, come in and build on, on that. And I think we haven't up to now because you've got to think our parents have come into a new country. Mm. They were doing different things. Their, their requirements were different. And now it's upon us because we're the future, we're not going anywhere. These are going to be yeah. our homelands. Yeah. Um, and how are we going to now have the role models mm. of Islam mm. and have a Western society as well where we're having these dual identities and balancing yeah. them. So we have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. But I think, alhamdulillah, we are, I think, you know, we're on the right mm. trajectory. I think, you know, Taking what you're saying about, you know, not shying away from, yes, you know, having a, a secular background, you know, mm -hmm. studying, but also bringing ourselves forward into the religious, you know, realm of, you know, doing these type of shows and educating our children. You know, we know that say the Zainab gave amazing speeches in the in the courtyard of, yeah. of Yazid. Mm. Um, and we know that Bibi Fatima, you know, she say, she did this as well. So we have these perfect role models, we have these perfect examples where they didn't shy away from standing up for their rights. Yeah. They didn't shy away from standing up for what was the truth and what was theirs. Um, and if we today as women in this society, in this generation, there are so many kind of you know, forces that sometimes try and attack us. And especially, you know, we live in this society where sometimes hijab becomes very difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, practicing as a Muslim becomes very difficult sometimes in this society. But when we have people like, say, the Zainab, or say, the, say the Fatima, we've seen that they were able to stand up in the courtyard of Yazid, you know, and, and portray their strength and, and fight for what is rightfully theirs, 
then we should take that strength from them and use that in our everyday lives. You know, she was the beacon of courage, of strength, mm. and she got that from her mother. So we, if we look upon that, then surely the only way is up for us. Yeah. And I think, like I said before, it was like she's wholesome, isn't she? Mm. She's the best daughter. She's the best sister. She's yes. the best wife. And even her role as a wife, you know, just would have been immaculate. But then when it came to the duty towards the imam, mm. she fulfilled that to the best yes. of her. So we have so many lessons. Sorry, do so you want to add to that? Or? No, I completely agree. Like you said, she... she is so wholesome and whichever angle you look at her from which there wasn't a duty that was neglected mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. just managed to yeah. she was superwoman mm -hmm. she managed to fulfill every duty that there was you know to the point where we're taught that say the Zainab she didn't cry for her martyred sons yeah. until she got home you know she was constantly with Imam Hussein and she cried for Imam Hussein and she fought on to carry on his message and it's only when she got home did she then you know cry over her sons not because she obviously she, she, as a mother we all love our children yeah. but she knew that that message yeah. had to be delivered and if she was to break down and cry for her children how would that message of Islam be delivered yeah I think also that um I think the, the lessons we learn from Karabla about the, you know, the bravery, the kindness, the patience, all of these attributes have the, the you know, the, the positive traits that we mm. are taught to be, um, to be emulating, that they perfected. It, for me, it doesn't really differentiate between male and female. I think as souls, we all have the same mm. um, tests and trials in life, but it's how we, our roles come into this world. But as females, you know, we have our femininity and we yes. have this inner strength within us, which a woman, she showed yeah. a female can take on that. You know, there mm. was obviously the imam of her time, Imam Zain al Abidin was there afterwards. Mm. Um, and she yet she took on her role um, and so beautifully um, and I think what Allah has given to women um, as in the, the roles and responsibilities we have in this day and age we have immense you know responsibilities mm -hmm. even in mm -hmm. our lives here um, and I think that she she gave that example of of that these are mortal lessons they're not just for Karbala mm, there yes, that they yes. are things that we absolutely can have relevant in mm -hmm. our lives today mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and I, I think many of you mentioned the misfortunes that she she went through in the strength of Sayyidah Zainab, you know, she was known mm. as Umm al-Masaib, yeah. the, the mm. mother of misfortune because of how, how many um, how many misfortunes befell yeah. her, you know, from such a young age, losing her father, her grandfather, then, then her mother, and then her father. Um, so, so I know we have an, um, another show coming up about patience, mm. so I don't, I don't want to talk mm. too much about that. But I think when discussing Sayyidah yes. Zainab, one of the, yeah. the yes. attributes which really stand out is patience. Um, what can we learn from this patience? I mean, in everyday life, when we talk about implementing lessons into our mm. own life, you know, what can we learn from Sayyidah Zainab's patience? And especially considering everything that she went through and she, you know, I think what a beautiful thing is when Ibn Ziyad said to her, um, you know, what did you think of what happened yeah. to your brother? She said, Ma ra'itu illa jamila. And to me, is exactly. that positive, mm. that being positive and, and trusting in Allah's, Allah's plan is something mm. that many of us don't have. You know, we mm. would fall in the first obstacle. Yeah. So. She didn't have, sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Today, I was just going to say, you know, when she says to Ibn Ziyad, I saw nothing but beauty, whenever we hear like these one-liners from the Ahlul Bayt, it's, it's never for dramatic effect or no. to sound poetic. It's really exactly, they are saying exactly what they mean. And the fact that she genuinely only saw beauty in what happened mm. makes you wonder how her mind was wired um, for her to think that this is beautiful mm. and similarly I guess it makes me want to kind of strive in a way to try and see the good in every misfortune as difficult as it is and as much easier said than done mm. but if we have any hope of kind of reaching anywhere near Sayyidah Zainab or just to even call ourselves true lovers and true followers of Sayyidah Zainab I guess we need to take that element of tawakkul and okay, I don't understand why this has happened, mm. but because Allah has planned it, it can only be good for me and mm. it can only be beautiful and taking that. Yeah. I think also with her, so what I take from the, um, I saw nothing but beauties, I think they, although she wasn't a masum, 
she was raised in a home full of mm-hmm. Muslim and I, you know, her status and Hazrat Abbas, only Allah knows what it actually is. And I feel that with that statement that she had, my personal, um, you know, the way I see it is maybe perhaps she saw the eternal message that he gave, mm-hmm. that, you know, what was going to happen beyond that point. And when we go through trials in our lives, you know, at that point we are, one of the minimum things is be patient, you know, mm-hmm. and that's when you're saying, what is it? It's actually just wait and see what Allah has planned for you. And it may not, we may not see the immediate effects there and then. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it may be that, that some sort of oppression that comes upon us mm-hmm. from other people. But when, lo and behold, when Allah's plan comes into place, mm-hmm. it's for eternity. Yes. And I think when her, she, what she saw and what she was saying is that she saw today, like you said, we're here because of those personalities. Yeah. And we are, you know, she gives me a strength that I yeah. think, you know, only someone from Ahab Bait can give that yes, to you. Yes. Um, and I think that when she, so when she said it, she certainly said it with Marifa of what was going to happen for eternity mm. and, um, and what her, you know, what the sacrifice meant. Um, but in terms of like, so when you were saying about her upbringing, so she saw so much loss in the early part mm. of her life. And if we look at today and they say, you know, children need therapy because, you know, they need to have wholesome lives and, you know, complete lives. But they show trial after trial mm. that mm. part and parcel of their life is loss. Yes. And, but it's in the way of Allah. It's mm. a sacrifice they give and they don't complain. They are mm. patient. They're grateful. They're, you know, and actually they come out stronger mm. and it doesn't affect them. And I think that's something that we all can and should learn from mm. them, that mm. it's not a, don't look at others' misfortune as, oh, God's not happy mm. with you. Mm. Actually, he trials the ones he loves. So not to judge others who go through difficulty, but also when they do go through, maybe they will give you that consolation of when you lost somebody that yeah. you love and think, well, they're the ones I can turn to because they will understand my pain. And you can talk to pe- you know personalities and say the Zainab. They are forever living. They're not people mm. that came and went and that's it. You know, we don't believe that in our school of thought. So I think they're very relatable. Mm. Um, and they show us that no matter what you go through, God is always there. And don't lose your hope mm. um, and just keep striving for, mm. for the truth yeah. that you believe in. Yeah. I think, you know, we're talking about patience and we're talking about, say, the Zainab and just... An example which um, it's quite difficult to talk about, but recently uh, my husband had an injury as well Mm. and there was a lot of blood loss and alhamdulillah now he's fine. But when you see the blood loss, the first thing I thought about was how did Sayyidah Zainab cope? How did she cope with seeing, you know, Shimmer sat on the chest of Imam Hussein? How did she cope with... Um, seeing the millions and hundreds of arrows in Imam Hussein's body or Hazrat Abbas's arms, you know, chopped off. How did she cope with that? So it was almost like a sense of, Alhamdulillah, Allah, you've, you've given me this, mm. but now give me the strength to overcome and to never, I never want to go through a trial. I never want to go through a test where I, where I question Allah, mm. where I say, why, why Allah, why me, you know? It's almost like, why not me? You love me, so you've given me this. Mm. Now give me your strength to overcome this test. And I think that's that's the kind of level that I want to try and get to. When I think of Bibi Zainab, I think she it was almost as if she welcomed, mm. you know? Mm. I saw nothing but beauty. She was welcoming the tests and the trials in her life because she knew that ultimately her reward lay with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And she her main focus and her main goal was the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I keep that, and just talking from my own daily life, if I try and keep that at the forefront of my life, it just makes those things so much easier. Like when you go through little tests and trials and everybody, we all have that, where yeah. it's it husbands or children or, you know, whatever we go through, if we keep her example in our mind the whole time, it just makes my life that much easier. I think we maybe uh, i think as people of this faith because we're born into it we maybe not perhaps um appreciate Mm. what we've got the gems because i when i read articles from people that have no faith you know they they perhaps have lost their mother from a young age and then they'll grow up as adults and they'll say and this is recently i read this um this publication and and somebody she's in her 20s now she said but i don't even understand did my mum even love me these Mm. questions were so basic and i just my heart felt for her and i thought how difficult is that to make some understanding of why something happened her mother passed when she was two years old and she never knew why and all of this and um and i thought but we are so blessed that despite what we go through in life 
we have Allah to thank for mm. it. That, that, mm. You know, he doesn't test us beyond our Limits. capacity. Yeah. And again, Ahl Bayt have their position and they are, you know, masoom and infallible. We'll never get to those stages. But mm. in our own life, like what you went through mm. is within your capacity. Yes, yes. And when you come out of it and you're stronger, you have actually grown in yourself. Mm. That's something else that happens next time. Mm. It doesn't ever. Mm. But you're going to be prepared in a better yeah. way because you know you can survive it. Yeah. But it's also, you know, sending your salams on the Ahlul Bayt and gaining strength from them, asking them directly, you know, I send my salams upon you. Please help me. I'm Definitely. in this position. I'm in this situation. I have this trial. I have this test. Now help me to get out of this situation. How can I better myself so that I gain that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also please him by not questioning him and always trying to say alhamdulillah for everything that is everything that befalls upon you every good thing every bad thing that's that's beautiful yeah, yeah. i think w one aspect that i i love um when i read the, the story of karbala and after karbala is when sayyid azam said you will never be able to erase our memory yeah. mm. and it's and it's and it shows us that you can defeat someone in this world, but the but justice will always prevail, yes. and and the truth will always prevail. And I think that is and that is beautiful in every sense. When mm -hmm. you know when we live our life, is are we standing with the truth? Even if, for example, no one stands with us, or even exactly. if we stand alone, and that's when the true test comes in. That if we would we stand? And the second thing is about speaking up. Um, so his name Alam Ali Salam spoke up when she saw wrong. So. Um, you know, touching upon this, what I, I want, I want to kind of understand. You know, if there is one aspect in Sayyidah Zainab that you would really touch upon, what would it be? That, as, as we mentioned in the previous episode, is about implementing these infallibles and, and taking mm. practical lesson, lessons from mm. them. So, if it's one thing that the first thing that comes to mind, and the first thing that you really feel like you you learn from Sayyidah mm. Zainab, what would it be? I think it's her zero tolerance policy for oppression mm. like it just it's it's a complete no um and like i said you know she saw it from her mother she also saw it from her father we hear so many examples of um like people in high positions mm. trying to not bribe but trying to get for example extra benefits or extra special treatment from imam ali during his khilafah and he would completely cut that off from the get-go. He had no tolerance for that. And her kind of stance when it came to the court of Yazid, the fact that she had zero hesitation mm. in saying what, what. Um, and I think sometimes as a community, perhaps we see Sayyidah Zainab through a cultural lens. So we think she, you know, she was a shy, timid woman who stayed at home and then she came out, <laughs> did her sermon and went back in. That's not what happened. Yeah. And I think often, not in all communities, but sometimes there's a little bit of hypocrisy when it comes to the treatment of women or giving women a platform. Mm. When we talk about Sayyid Zainab and we praise her and it, you know the sermon is the highlight, we go on and on about it. But then when it comes to our own women in our communities, we don't want to give them the same voice yeah. that she had. Yeah. Definitely. So that's yeah. something. Yeah, it's a sore topic, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think also the way, you know, the way that she protected um, after, you know, the massacre and after the, the shahadat of Imam Hussein, uh, the way that she protected the women, the way that she protected the Imam, Imam mm. Zain al Abidin, the way that she protected the children, and, you know, the journey from Kufa to Sham in, in the courtyard of Yazid, in the prisons of Sham, and then on the way back, you know, they went back to Karbala, and then they went back to, then they went to, you know, Medina, the journey then. How she protected every member of her family mm. um, and how she was with Bibi Sakina in the prisons, I, I find that so, her heroism is, it, it makes you, her strength makes you tremble sometimes. Yeah. You know, how she stood up and how she protected Imam Zain al Abidin. he was so frail and she knew that she had to protect him because he was the Imam of the time and yeah. he was the one who was going to carry on the message of Islam after Imam Hussein. So mm. that strength that she showed, that bravery, um, to protect the family and the household, you know, like I said, it makes me tremble. Definitely, yeah. Do it. Do you have yeah, you go for it. I think it's um, interesting. Um, your... What you know, when when reading the bath, about the Battle of Karbala, I think even my Imam Zain Abidin he says what he after the Battle of Karbala he said what I cry for the most mm. is 
what happened after the Battle mm. of Karbala, how the women were treated. And just reading the narrations, hearing that they, you know, people were boil, uh, pouring boiling yes. water on them, they were throwing things at them. And it's um, the aspect of snatching the hijab. I mean, this is one thing I want to speak, speak about because in today's society, a lot of our Muslim women have had their hijab snatched off. Mm. And, and, it, and it's something that a lot of people relate to. I know people myself, mm. personally, that have had their hijab snatched off. I can off relate to of, it to myself. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just after um, we had the terrible bombings in London. I mean, if mm. you remember a few yeah. years ago mm. that we had them on the underground. And I remember I was walking back from work um, it was about five o'clock in the evening. It was summertime, so it was still daylight. Um, and I'm walking to the train station, and a lady from behind uh, grabs my hijab wow. and pulls it off me. And instantly, oh obviously, gosh. you turn around. Yeah. And she's standing behind me, and she's with a group of other men and women, and they're laughing and they're giggling. Oh my God. And my main reaction at that point was, let me put my hijab on Gosh. and just walk away from that situation. Yeah. Because Crazy. if yeah. you confront them, they mm. may do more. Yes. And, and my main thing was let me get to safety. Mm. But it's very unsettling to think that, you know, you as a woman, you're trying your hardest to keep your modesty, to practice the teachings of Islam, to follow in the footsteps of Bibi Zainab. And then you have other people who you know, they, they don't know, they're ignorant, they don't mm. know what we stand for and what we believe, um, and they feel that they can come and do this to you. It's disheartening, but, you know, it, it's a perfect example of how we should not stop. Yeah. And how, yes, even in society today, our children, our girls of today's society will face this. Mm. It's not going to get any easier. It's probably going to get harder with time. But we know that we cannot stop the hijab. We cannot stop our modesty. We cannot, you know, take our hijab off just to fit in with society. Mm. Because that's not the way that Bibi Zainab did it. Yeah. I think, like you said, um, mm. we'll, we'll never be able to please society any, anyway, yeah. even if someone takes it off. I remember actually, you remind me, a sister, she said, you know, she took off her hijab to avoid Islamophobia. And mm. this was actually on, on a previous channel that I was presenting at. So I took off my hijab to avoid Islamophobia. And then the next week, I was walking the street, street and I got verbally, racially mm -hmm. attacked, exactly. saying, go back to your country. Yeah. She said, I can't escape. Yeah. So she said, you know, I took off the hijab to kind of avoid attacks. And attacks will come either way. You can never Yeah, society. she doesn't matter. I think that's almost, um, I think we feel that we've got to, uh, you know, um, integrate into society mm. here but actually like you said you know this girl will still be the wrong color you know yes. you will still sound different perhaps you will still look different and there will always be something someone doesn't like you yeah. know unless you're blonde blue eyed and then you might get away with it but yeah. you know there yeah. will always be so why are you compromising something that you know but again it's a relationship and mm. i know we, we've got um topics in the future talking about hijab mm. so and i think you, you were asking before what lesson we take from say the zainab and i think for me it's her strength as in no matter what the calamity was her patience, forbearance, and she showed um, qualities that were not very different from, you know, if if different at all um, from Ahlbeit, mm. and um, and she, it's just her pristine mannerism of, of so gracefully going through it all that she spoke with such ferocity mm. to Yazid, mm. but she didn't waver in her belief or her, mm. you know, and she carried on, and I think that gives you. Any woman that's going through trials, and many, many women go through very different trials in life, and it's to say it's okay because, you know, no matter what you go through, Allah is there. Keep mm, your hope mm, in him. Mm. Keep positive. And don't, you know, these people that will come in the face of Yazid, we'll have those sort of people mm. in our lives, but it'll be along to our capacity. But um, but just bear with that patience and um, and let people say what they want as long as your heart is with Allah. He Definitely. sees the hearts and mm. he sees what your you know struggles are. Um, and and you know at the end Allah is the only one we should be pleasing, not people, mm -hmm. because people you know will be have one day with you, one day against exactly. you. And it's just yes. one of those things. So it's not worth it. Yeah. Mm. Last few minutes. Anyone wants to get in some words before we end off? Say, Zainab. I think um, one thing that I think is important to mention is the importance of role models, mm. and. There are many, many options nowadays for mm. role models, but I think when it comes to say the Zainab, she's a role model for both men and women. Yes. I know we always associate her with hijab and we always associate yeah. her with women and trials that women go through. And absolutely, she went through 
every trial under the sun that we can think of. But she's a role model for both men and women. Mm -hmm. And truly, you know, when we when we talk about, you know, um, non-Muslims or people who don't understand Islam criticizing us for not giving women proper rights or not treating women well, we always kind of point towards the Ahlul Bayt and look at the Ahlul Bayt women. They, you know, they had such huge positions. And I think it's impor equally important for men to realize that Sayyidah Zainab is a role model for them as well, mm -hmm. as is Fatima Zahra. Mm -hmm. oh, I think beautiful. you're just beautiful, actually, because I think, you know, that's the nail on the head that we actually complete each other, both mm. genders, mm. that one yeah. without the other is incomplete. And the women, the roles and responsibilities we have, um, and she shows it could be outside the house, it could be inside mm. the house, it doesn't matter, merge and be a wholesome woman. And equally men, you know, to, we aren't anything without them and they aren't, Allah has created that system. So I think we need to see the beauty within each roles that we've been assigned. Definitely, yeah. I think we've run out of time. That was a beautiful discussion and it, it seems like it flew by. But um, yeah, I think it's beautiful and society will not flourish um, unless for the participation of both men and women. That's what we learn. We learn from Sayyidah Zayim alayhi salam's patience. We learn from her courage. We learn from her strength. And um, we should all have tawakkul in Allah, as Sayyidah Zainab said, um, the tawakkul in Allah and the trust in Allah's plan is always greater than ours and having that trust will inshallah make us succeed both in this life and the hereafter thank you all for tuning in and inshallah join us in the next episode where we talk about many of the other topics that we have planned for you assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh